Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Johnny and today is a special day. Today is the three year anniversary of Zombie Chronicles. That's right, that came out three whole years ago. It doesn't even seem like it's been that long. But I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look back at these eight maps and rank them. Now I'm not going to be ranking them on how good each map is, but how much they benefited from being remastered. So number one we can kind of say gets like a most improved medal. Also I'd like to note that I'm not going to be ranking the giant in this because it's still part of the main storyline and it didn't actually come out with Zombie Chronicles even though it was kind of remastered in the same way. So without further ado, let's get right into the number 8 spot. So number 8 is going to be Shangri-La. And remember, we're not basing this off of how good each map plays, but rather how much they benefited from being remastered. And with Shangri-La being remastered, it got rid of one crucial perk that made Shangri-La what it is, and that was PHE Flopper. And now I know they have Danger Closest, which is a classic gobble gum. But even so with that, you don't get it every round and sometimes you'll lose it and you forget that you don't have it anymore and then you're down yourself with Mustang and Sally's. Plus, I don't know if it's just me or Mustang and Sally's actually seem a little bit weaker on Black Ops 3 than on Black Ops 1. Not sure if that's actually fact, but that's just kind of how I've been seeing it. So with the remaster, even though it did make it more beautiful by upping the graphics, overall it didn't do a whole lot to add to the gameplay. Also, I got respect more. Now, coming in at number seven, we actually have Origins, and I think this one might surprise a lot of people. But hear me out on this: Origins was already one of the best maps, if not the best map, in Call of Duty Zombies. Plus, it's the only map to come back from Black Ops 2, so Origins already had a lot of things going for it. It already had the Wonder Fizz on it, so the only couple things that really benefited from being remastered was better graphics, which you can clearly see in the awesome staff animations and Gobblegums, which helped the easter egg tremendously. But not as much as a later entry we'll see on this list. So in summary, it was already almost perfect, and it's really hard to improve from that. Coming in at the number 6 spot is Keener der Toten. And again, similar to Origins, it was already a really good map. The remaster doesn't do a whole lot to improve and add to it. Obviously, every single map has the Samantha easter egg where you can get a free max ammo, and every single map added a wonder phase apart from Origins, which already had one. So looking at the unique improvements of Kino, we have from what was a gray map, completely gray map in Black Ops 1, to something that's actually really nice to look at. There are gold statues in the spawn room and a beautiful new teleport animation. Not much more to say about Kino, it's a pretty basic map. Comes in at number 6. Coming in at number 5 is Shinonuma. Here's where things get really good with the remasters though. Shinonuma doesn't have a Pack-a-Punch. So this makes the Gobblegums even more useful than many others on this list. With Gobblegums you can now Pack-a-Punch your gun and double Pack-a-Punch it to get that alternate ammo type. Along with that they moved Quick Revive from one of the random 4 perks that you can get in one of the 4 rooms to right there in your spawn, replacing the other one with Mule Kick. Number 4 is going to be Nocturne and Toten. Now you can take a lot of the reasonings from Shinonuma and apply them to this one as well, but the added bonus with Nocturne and Toten is that there were never any perks on this map except for Mule Kick in the Black Ops 1 remake. See now you have a Wonder Fizz. This opens up much more gameplay options than there were available in the past. Also they brought back the Thunder Gun which was nice, and like I said with Shinonuma, the Gobble Guns allow for pick a bunch of weapons and alternate ammo types which make high rounds attempts much easier. Alright, number 3 is going to Ascension. Where do I even start with the improvements on this one? Right as you hop into the map, you immediately know a difference. Back in Black Ops 1, it was a dull, bleak, black and white screen. Now there's actually a little bit of color to your screen, and when you turn the power on, it gets vibrant immediately, and it just glows with color. It really shows the change from before and after. And we all know the worst part about Ascension, right? The monkeys. Well, in the remake, they nerfed them. Not only that, but the Wonder Phase actually allows for you to get a couple extra perks without actually having to worry about guarding a perk machine, because the monkeys don't attack the Wonder Phase. On top of that, the Gobble Gums also allow for easier nuke power-ups to stop them entirely. Another great addition to Ascension, which I think goes completely underlooked a lot of times, is the music. The round change music and even just the ambience around the map 
is so nice compared to the dead atmosphere we had before. So coming in at number 2 is Verruckt. Like the other two World at War maps on this list, they all share kind of the same benefits, but this one has something special. It got rid of one of the worst wonder weapons and replaced it with the Wonder Waff. That alone, I believe, puts it up way higher on the list than maps like Shinonuma and Kino. Now same with Shinonuma and Noct. You can pack a punch now and get alternate ammo types, which makes high road attempts much easier. And I don't know if you've ever played the World at War version of this map, but the zombies are a crack in that one. So Black Ops 3 really helps with that. And now finally, coming into our number one spot, most improved goes to Moon. Wow, this map is just absolutely beautiful now. From Area 51 to the laboratories to the biodome, just wow. Also, I think a really nice touch is that it actually added a gobble gun machine to Area 51, opening up way more possible challenges. And again, same like Ascension, but the music on this map is actually some of my favorites in the entire game. The music when Samantha is rising out of the pyramid gives me chills every time. And the dark, depressing piano that plays as the rockets are flying towards the earth really give you the sense of, oh my god, that just happened. And I know I've already brought it up once, but the biodome was just so beautiful now compared to what it was before. Also, we already know Moon is probably the most RNG-based easter egg in all of Call of Duty Zombies. Well, now you have Gobblegums, which helps that so much. It's seriously hard going back to playing the original Moon on Black Ops 1 after playing this, just for those few very reasons. And another one I actually almost forgot to bring up is you don't have to complete Shangri-La's Easter Egg before you do the Moon Easter Egg. Now in Black Ops 3, if you're Richtofen, you just spawn with the Golden Rod. So visually, graphically, with the music and gameplay-wise, Moon hands down deserves the number one spot and the most improved medal. If you guys think I'm wrong and have completely lost my mind, please leave a comment down below what you guys think your list is. I'd really like to know. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys did enjoy, please think about liking and subscribing. I'm going to be posting a lot more content soon. Actually soon, I'm planning on trying to complete the Go Ride Krovi Easter Egg upside down. Yep, you heard that right. I'm going to be playing the game upside down. So subscribe so you can stay notified when I post a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.